Earlier today, I removed some of the air suspension parts uh, from the beast here. And, okay, I know what you're saying. Well, Kent, why are you working on the air suspension system? You should be, you know, working on that engine uh, to get it running. Well, let me explain. You know, I've, I've got to send the valves out uh, to Martin Warminghausen to have them rebuilt, and that isn't going to happen overnight. So I think if I, get, if I get the valves off and get those shipped out tomorrow, then, you know, they're going to get back here when about the time I need them, all right? So that's why I'm doing this. Also, you know, it was very obvious right away that uh, the air springs were shot. You know, we call them air bags, but th this rubber piece here is just totally shot. All of them are leaking. You know, just, so I've, I've got to replace these, and these aren't cheap. <laughs> So I thought, well, as long as I'm pulling the leveling valves, I'm going to go ahead and pull all these uh, air bags or air springs out and get those coming as well. Because uh, should I be able to get this engine running successfully, uh, then I want the air suspension to be working properly right behind the brakes, <laughs> just, just right after I get the brakes done. But, uh, you know, I know a lot of you don't have these cars there's not a lot of them so I, I don't think many of you need to see all the details of removing some of these parts but uh, we did have to remove the front sway bar look at the si look at the size of this sway bar um, that is one honking bar but the bolts they used and I think the engineers underestimated the strain on that sway bar. Obviously, somebody's been driving this car and cornering it very hard because we had a hard time getting these sway bar bolts out there so badly bent. I'll probably, I may even look into using aircraft bolts <laughs> when I replace these. But, uh, you know, I've got, I've got rubber parts. So pulling, pulling these things off, you know, bushing, sway bars, air suspension, it's all, almost all of it's rubber. So, I've got, I've got the rubber stops for the lower control arm. I have to replace those. Those are all busted up. So uh, getting a bunch of these parts off and getting them ordered, getting them coming, is, is it's better that I do it now than, than, than wait a month. So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. But um, I'm going to show you now, you know, we had to, once we got uh, the sway bar off, you know, we had to unbolt this is, this is the steel part of the air spring. We had to unbolt the top and the bottom from both the upper control arm and the lower control arm. And then we had to, you know, kind of twist and turn and, and snake it out of there. But I kind of want to show you this up close and let you see how this works. I'll apply a little compressed air to it so you can see the theory of the operation of one of these air springs. <laughs> right off, you can see. Look at... Look at the deterioration of the rubber. You can see right through to the cord. Uh, this, is, this is totally gone after years of sitting. You know, it was sitting totally collapsed. So that's part of, that always accelerates the deterioration. But this is, this is age, once again, it's a classic example of what happens to rubber parts at, with age. Remember, it didn't drive in 19 years. It just sat. So that, <laughs> it's not mileage, it's age. Now, uh, this whole assembly is composed of this air tank that sits like that, and this bolts to the upper control arm, you can see the inlet here for the, the, the compressed air from the engine-driven compressor. And then it's split right here. You can see the screws where the two halves are split. And then you have this lower uh, steel tower that bolts to the lower control arm. That just sits up into that, that air bag. And I'm going to just apply light, a light amount of compressed air to this so you can see what happens when you, when air is applied, you can see, you see, now it won't hold air, see it leaking back? <laughs> so all four of these were leaking like this, but at least this will give you an idea how, how this works. Now I, I was able to do a, something a little, a bit different uh, when I, when I pull these off the back end of the car. Let me show you that now. Here's the location of the rear air spring. It sits right above this uh, rear trailing arm. It has one bolt that holds it right here to the trailing arm. And then there's uh, some bolts that you have to access in the trunk. Now, I removed this one a little bit differently. I, uh, we decided we, we had good access to this ceiling ring, the screws in the ceiling ring back here. And we were able to just 
separate the half. Now this will this will eliminate us having to remove uh, the steel chamber uh, from at the attachment in the trunk and the lines. And then I just could take this uh, the the airbag out. So here you're going to get a chance to see what they look like. Um, and that's how they seal. When you, when you tighten the two halves together, they seal right here. That's a rather wide sealing area. But look, look at the condition of this one. And this one's even worse. But, uh, you know, these aren't very cheap. I wish I could reuse them. I, you, know, I'm, you know I'm Dutch, but these are not <laughs> reusable. Now it's time to remove these air valves. And there's one in the rear and two in the front. I've done a whole video series on these, so I'm not going to go over the removal of these in this video. I'll just put a link below. But you do have to be very careful when you remove these. We're going to plug these lines and we're going to clean these fittings, make sure there's no potential for putting dirt in these, uh, these lines. <laughs> you do not want any dirt in these leveling valves. So these are going to go out to Martin within the next couple of days for overhaul. And now, it's time to get the fuel pump ready to go in because the fuel pump's going to go in and then we're going to install the fuel tank. And we'll go over that in the next video in this series. I've removed quite a few of these air springs from these 109 chassis cars over the years. And I have to tell you that removing these was the most pleasurable and easiest of the lot. And why? Anybody want to guess why? That's right, no rust. Look at, look at these bolts. All these screws, look at how clean these screws are. And uh, uh, these are the screws that held the halves together for the, uh, uh, the, the tank and, and the ceiling ring. I mean, everything came off so easily. Just put a little bit of uh, PV blaster on them, let it sit a little bit, and they just all came off. Now, can you imagine if you were dealing with a rusty car? Now, that just not just repairing rust holes in the body. And, you know, I'm trying to make a point again. But every one of those fasteners, if they would have been severely rusty, could have added 10 to 15 minutes per fastener to the job, including the, the hunt, the hunt to hunt down new fasteners, because a lot of them you'd have to either drill out, break off, and then you've got to uh, go find replacement fasteners. So I just, I just wanted to use this as an illustration. I know. Uh, a couple of videos ago, I stressed this thing, you know, if the car has been exposed to road salt, I sprint away from it. And this is one of the key reasons. It's not just the rust holes in the body. It's dealing with rusty fasteners. So I hope you enjoyed a quick look at the air suspension on this 109. The beast is going to rise again. Stay tuned for the next episode.